Welcome to our closing celebration. Wanda and I want to thank you for holding space for each other and for us here this week, for your presentations, your conversations, your warmth, your friendship, your wisdom. If you haven't taken that walk and talk with someone yet, no worries. The week has been packed. But I do urge you to tuck away the name of someone whose presence has invited or intrigued you this week and reach out to them later this month. The methodology of the way this project, this program this year came into being was through walk and talks. I will remind you that things can be born of two people who don't even know each other that well saying, hey, let's read a book together. Let's go for a walk. Let's talk about what might want to be born between us. As we conclude um, our time together, we want to invite into the room Ayana Elizabeth Johnson via her 2019 TED Talk. So let me um, bow to the gods of technology while I share my screen with you. A leading scholar activist in the climate justice movement just told us that building community around solutions is the most important thing. We don't need more science because as we've heard over and over again this week, at its base, this is a spiritual problem and we hold spiritual resources. Building community around solutions is the most important thing. Building community is what we do as religious educators. It's a big part of what we've done this week. Ayana's new book is coming out this fall. It's called, What If We Get It Right? What if we get it right? I turn it over to Wanda now for our next move in this time of closing. So as a way of helping to capture and process some of what we've been gleaning from this gathering, we're going to enter into a time of reflection with the aid of practicing writing haiku. In case you're not familiar with this term, haiku is an ancient form of Japanese poetry, which typically consists of 17 syllables and three lines and draws upon imagery from the natural world. So these three lines traditionally are five syllables followed by seven syllables followed by five syllables. So I'm learning as I was reading that there's variation about the, amongst of the number of syllables that you can have, but the typical format is a short line with a longer line followed by a short line. And in addition to drawing upon natural, Im uh, natural images in traditional Japanese practice, a haiku should describe a moment of insight. The haiku conveys a single moment where the poet suddenly sees or realizing thing, something. So one teacher of this process emphasized too that we should, when we're writing a haiku to go with our first thought and not to overthink. So Dory's gonna show us um, a few examples of some haiku Give her a minute to get him up here. And these were written by some folks who were newcomers to REA this year. To me, Spencer Helms shared, soil once far from me, keys from ancestors unlocked, clay is home once more. Shannon Hopkins, hope grows, as people work in new ways, birds chirp. From Tyler Sitt, the forest preaches, God's healing was always here. Empire will compost. And finally from Nick Lugnant, Cheryl, Eugen, Mark, despair is heavy. Hope blooms, our powers combined. So we're gonna give you five minutes um, to reflect. Do you have a slide with the questions? Maybe. No, I'm gonna put those questions in the chat. Oh, those are in the chat too, okay, sorry. All right, so we're gonna give you five minutes to um, take this opportunity to reflect on this past week and write your own haiku. 
And just as a way to spark your thought, um, these questions, what is a question or insight that you're carrying with you from this week into your vocation or context? Or if this is more generative, what calling are you hearing from dear earth as we conclude our gathering? So again, what question or insight are you carrying with you from this week into your vocation or context? And what calling are you hearing from dear earth as we conclude our gathering? So we'll take five minutes. We'll call you back in five minutes, but I invite you, if you're done writing your haiku before then and are willing to share it, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and we'll share our collective wisdom with this wonderful form of poetry. Thank you. I'm going to speak some of what's been shared in the chat into our room. Shifts in consciousness, postures of hope and joy, what we need is here. Celebrate every form of healing. Pay attention. Go just like the bees. Despair consumes me, but hope and care are stronger. Lament, grieve, persist. Climate justice now. What is our calling, dear earth? Be community. Rooted in dear earth, connected with networks of wisdom, I notice unseen things. Love nature. Nature loves me. In God, we both trust. Despair shared with friends leads to learning joy and hope. Violence be gone. The heat hangs heavy. Even the insects are moving slow. Take a nap or swim. Hope find me right here in this precious place, dear earth, called to tend and care. Breeze blows on my brow, seasons shift across the earth, calling what comes next. All creation joins. Shoulder to shoulder we stand, communal healing. Reading makes them disgruntled workers. Education is political. We read, so we work. What new forms await? Working as one together, healing all our world. One world inviting. This web hive ever growing, synergy made live. Change education. We are teaching consumers, but not citizens. Let's let these words of power and wisdom settle with us for just a moment before we transition to our next. Next thing. So we heard Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson in her video say that building solutions around community is the most important thing and that everything that we do matters and that the work of healing, not her words, but mine, um, no matter what the outcome is worth doing Anne Walker, during her presidential address the other evening, told us that hope resides in kinship. And we've been working on building kinship through this, um, through this program this week. And so I'm going to invite us into a, some breakout rooms. Eric, I realize we forgot to give you a heads up about this. Um, sorry. Um, we're gonna break into groups of three for 12 minutes. I'll talk for another minute or so, just so that we give um, Eric a minute to um, adjust. And um, what I'm gonna invite you to talk about in your groups is the question, are the questions that Dory has just posted in the chat. So what is a most next faithful step you might enact as a result of this gathering? 
and in the spirit of continuing to build community when we go from this place, what community or person can you share this with as an act of accountability? So we're gonna have 12 minutes in small groups. Um, and Eric, are you all set with that? Yep, we're ready to go. Wonderful. I'll open up the rooms. All right, we'll see you all on the other side in 12 minutes. Um, I hope you had some generative conversation um, in your small groups um, and, and holding in your heart um, some of what was shared in those spaces. So before we um, shift into our final closing ritual, Dory and I wanted to offer a time for some gratitudes and some announcements. And um, I first want to begin by... Um, just affirming, as Dory said at the beginning, that this meeting definitely has been a team effort. And we are so grateful um, for all the hands that made this event um, come into fruition. Um, we couldn't have done it without the support of a lot of folks. And I just want to thank um, some of the behind the scenes people, um, Eric and Alex, who've been handling our tech. Um, our staff, Lakeisha and Chris, who have been um, holding space for us and um, carrying a lot of the details for our wonderful president, Anne, um, and the wisdom that she has brought, as well as the guidance. And for all of you who've served as tech hosts and facilitators for our various sessions, you've really um, done an amazing job of helping this um, conference come into being. And I would like to add to that list a gratitude for Esser Kim and for all of the people who presented papers and collaborative sessions, sometimes presenting for the first time and sometimes first time attendees at the REA. You especially were brave and courageous to present um, for the first time in a new place. I also want to thank our amazing plenary speakers. I was so happy to, you know, after this year of planning and all of the wondering and all of the dreaming about who we would have, I was thrilled with the way they showed up and the way they uh, brought their whole selves to us and their incredible presence with us. So this conference, Dear Earth, has been and is a labor of love of so many people, and we thank you. Did I leave anybody out? Wanda, <laughs> we probably did. I don't think so. We probably did. If we left you out, we're sorry and we love you. <laughs> we, we're sorry and we love you. And we want to shout out, um, uh, as we move towards some announcements, we want to shout out the uh, Warnham Award winners. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see their names and the titles of their papers. We think it's important to give this a moment in the spotlight. So here we go. I am screen sharing. I have I have terrible fear about screen sharing. I thought it would be better by the end of this meeting, but it isn't. <laughs> there we go. Oops, wrong wrong slide though. There we go. Um, can y'all see that? Thumbs up. Yes, we can see. Yes. That. All right. So our Warnham Award winners are Beth Nolan. What do five year olds think about God creation? and relationships with the earth. Paul Hendrick von Stratton, anticipating the opportunities and challenges as, of using off the shelf games to educate, educate people on sustainability. And Shannon Hopkins, notes on the land towards an economics of mutuality formed by and informing new communities. And I'm just thrilled that we were able to transform this award from an award that went to one person to this kind of collaboration. And uh, I do believe, and I've been reinforced in my thinking this week that the future is collaborative. And so here we have an example of sharing this award among three um, scholars and each of them will get the $500 award to do with as they wish and another 500 towards coaching this project into its next steps. And as part of that, we will be having a fall gathering of the Religious Education Association online. And these people will be asked to share 
a little bit about these projects and where they're going. So we're excited that we're pulling a little thread of this uh, week of Dear Earth into the future by seeding that. So we hope you'll come back to that fall meeting. You'll be hearing more about it soon. Now we'll turn it over to Eileen and Annie to um, give a little plug for our next annual gathering. So as we think about um, the, the topic of navigating humanity and we think about technology ethics and the future of religious education, I want to just start off with this very, with this short that guides us through um, different uh, uh, technology and different inventions throughout time um, as they have a little a little debate. <laughs> All right. So all of these different inventions, of course, have had those who thought it was great, right? The spreading of ideas of the printing press and those who argued that the printing press would make us lose our ability to remember and oral traditions, right? So there are always gains and losses. And we think about that as we move into talking specifically about our call um, and the various ways to think about how we interact with, um, with technology and changes. And so um, the, as far as I know, Eric, the, um, the, the website is up, it's available. Um, and there's a brief intro here, but you can already go to the call for proposals. Um, and what we've done is said some general stuff um, with some broad questions. What distinguishes human intelligence from artificial? How is community being redefined in this digital age? What defines the essence of human existence amidst the rise of robotics and animation? And then we have some specific questions here that you might want to take in and, um, I don't know how much of it you can see, take in and um, let's spark your imagination. Um, I've heard a lot this week that I think there is some synergy possible between um, the dear earth commitments that we all have and how might we harness um, digital technology to serve the environment the ways we would like. So there you go. It is up and available folks. And if there's anyone that has a particular interest, uh, we like to strike where it is hot. So go ahead and put your uh, email in the chat and Eileen and I will reach out to you um, so we can collaborate on this theme for next year. Great, thanks y'all. And I, I am so glad you're sharing the load of program chair. Wanda and I do not know how anybody ever did it alone. It's a lot and we're glad you're collaborating. So uh, any other final announcements or gratitudes or anything else for the good of the people gathered? If not, we're going to move into just a closing ritual. I see Mary Hess raising her hands. Yeah, I just want to take a moment. Maybe this is part of your closing ritual, but I really want to recognize Lakeisha and Chris who are leaving at the end of this meeting for the a marvelous work that they've done. And I know you thank them already for this program, but it's a lot of other stuff they've done too. So just thank you, thank Mary. you. Yes, thank you, Mary. We It is not part of our closing ritual. So let's give that its moment right well, now. And then also Anne, who, who is stepping down as president, right? Yes, yes. So. Lots of transitions, lots of changes to the board and especially, um, yeah, this loss of uh, Chris and Lakeisha who have been instrumental in creating a sense of hospitality, radical hospitality as a community that, that has really shaped and changed who we are over the last several years. So thank you. Thank you. Deep, deep thanks. All right. Farrell, you have your hand up. Thank you. Just a quick 
I know many of us have said it, but for both um, both of you, Dory and Wanda, in our conversations, in our walks and talks, in many different breakout rooms, we don't know how it happened that this fell into our laps this year, but the timing has been just phenomenal, cosmic. <laughs> and we're just so grateful that you took the time to start walking and talking and that you allowed it to evolve this way. It's been a gift, like honestly, perfect timing. So thank you again. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm just letting that settle in. So we now invite you into a closing ritual, a time of honoring and celebrating the fullness of the community that has held us this week. We are grateful for the indigenous people, the orig original inhabitants of our lands, who lovingly and respectfully lived in kinship with our bioregions for generations. May our ongoing work, play, and being honor their legacy by our commitments to their continued flourishing as a people and following their example of caring for the earth as our neighbor and our kin. We offer gratitude to all of our wise and loving human ancestors who nurture the best of each of us and our communities. Allow us to live into the blessings they entrust to us. Take a moment now to look out a window if one is nearby or gaze upon a plant, a pet, a rock, or some other living artifact of the more than human world that accompanied you during our gathering. We are grateful for our more than human kin who are present here with us in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our nearby outdoor spaces. Take a moment to give thanks to those members of the more than human community who are gathered with you this day either in your space or outside your window. We are grateful for all the ways in which these beings contribute to our health and the well being of our ecosystems. We also express gratitude to the human beings who have made it possible for each of us to attend through this week and to tend to each other this week our partners, friends, children, neighbors, and extended communities. Maybe they've brought us food, they have brought me food. <laughs> maybe they have listened to the stories that have surfaced for us this week, and maybe they will help us give birth to actions of love and healing born of this time together. Most of all, we offer thanks for the gift of gathering over the course of this past week to focus our spirits, minds, and bodies on our dear earth. May we move from this time together seeking to create spaces for brave and honest conversations, caring for the dignity of each person and acknowledging all of our gifts and our limitations, our beauty and our scars, our wisdom and our quirks, all of which we seek to offer in love and service. Amen. This concludes our time together, friends. Thank you so much.